This is real grass. Yes, mate. I'm already not in a good mood, man. I started off all right, got a good night's sleep, went to bed early. First flight was all right. We've got an hour and a half waiting time. I thought, oh, that's all right to wait for a flight. An hour and a half was actually walking to the gate from one plane to the other. I'd get on the plane, look, I'm like a sardine, look. I've had to take this off, take the jacket off. I've got a bag there, I've got my big suitcase under there. It's because you ain't running by the rules from us, you just got shoved. See, look at that, I'm empty. My stuff's a wave, baby. I just, I just need to get there. And it's 28 degrees there as well, so. It's already hot, it's baking. And it's already baking. I got all the winds turned on and they're all on me, if you haven't noticed. You're a thief, bro. Look at you, you're trying to buy. Hey, hey, that hot. Nah, it's baking. Yeah, I told you, man, baking it is. It's baking, bro. I see you lot on the other side, and I need to flip in, watch some Only Fools and Horses or something to calm down. Yes, mate. in a European competition, the second grade competition. I'm thinking, yeah, we're in Europe, so like, I can use my data in minutes and like, I've just landed here. These men are telling me, yeah, 110 megabytes for 50 pounds. 50 pounds. If I was to try and upload fan cams and we was to try and get content for you guys and upload it after the game, on 110 megabytes for 50 pounds, I'm saying, Mark, yo, we, we need about two grand. I'll be, saying to, more. I'll be saying to people, what did you think of the game? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be predicting them what they're going to say, but there's no point in asking them a question. Which was my one again? Yours was seven pounds. Seven bro. pounds something for <laughs> one megabyte, fam. Yeah, so that's one, yeah, and a, and a fan comes 500 megabytes. So what's, let's say, seven pounds 50 times 500 to upload one video. I'm not even good at maths, but that's please. <laughs> Anyway, let's get off this plane. I can really feel it's hot. Oh, everywhere you go, always take the weather with you. <laughs> For those that don't know, that was fully going to be in the last vlog that we didn't put out. <laughs> yeah, because it was freezing cold in an aluminium tin pot. <laughs> I don't think Bell Ray's going to be like this. I'm actually really looking forward to this. I have to say, one of my favourite things about coming to other countries is uh, languages. Because uh, sometimes you're looking, it's just like someone spilt the alphabet everywhere. I mean, what does that even say? I don't know. But that, I think is hilarious. Poo sucker. I mean, <laughs> smoking, health and safety, bad for your health, you know what I mean? So it's time to inspect the room. You know what it is. I keep saying the same thing every time. Cleanliness. It's clean bathroom, fam. Exactly. Clean bathroom, clean bed. That's all. I'm not going to lie. Bar. Where was we last time in Manchester? That was nice. Castle Point. Castle Mold on the ceiling. Oh, I never saw that. Well, anyway, <laughs> um, with this chain of hotels, I'm not going to say which one it is in case any of you that are in Serbia are going to try and run down and work out where we're staying. Yeah, you already but see the magic <laughs> room number. <laughs> Um, yeah, with this chain of hotels, it's usually good worldwide, so at least you know what you're getting. So, let's check it out. Ooh! Health and safety. Blue light from the floor. Mm. I say no, when, you, when they put a black light in your room, fam, it's you know what, yeah? clean, it? I'm just going to go straight into the bathroom because it's right here. It's clean, it's nice, it's fresh, it's normal. Yeah, so fresh and so clean. You can smell the cleanliness. Do you know what I'm saying? You can smell when the You can smell cleaning products and that. Yeah. Yeah? You know that it's all good. That's the key. And then obviously into the room, calm, calm. Just plain, normal, simple, clean. And then uh, ocean view. This As we do. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so that doesn't, you'd think, fucking hell, where are they? But <laughs> um, yeah, I like, do you know what? I like this feel, um, but there's a lot of graffiti on all the walls. Some of the walls look a bit worked and that, but so far what we've seen here i like it it's cultural it's got a nice feel everyone's been friendly and i know a lot of people including me sometimes you have like do you know what i'm saying worries about coming to these types of places and really serbian fans watching this or people who live out here they're probably thinking what's the big deal like do you know what i'm saying so um everyone seems friendly and it's hot oh i'm playing music let me pause that um and most of all it's hot 
I literally was about to pack the big North Face jacket. Yeah, I, I did. I still packed the woolly hat and the gloves because I thought when I checked the weather and it said 28 degrees, I thought this is lying to me. This is lying. I know it is. Let me just bring it. But I've come here and it is fully hot. It's fully warm. I'm in jeans and trainers, as you can see. Um, I need to get out of this. I might even uh, put some shorts on because I did pack them as well. Peace. So here we are in the streets of Belgrade, man. I have to say, it is hot, it is warm. Um, I did not expect the climate to be like this. That is the first thing I will say. So big up to um, Belgrade on that. Um, speaking to the guy in the hotel, Man United fan, man like Nicola, probably watching this as well. But um, he's just hooked us up with all the places to go. Um, and a lot of the things that Vuj, you lot know uh, Vuj from Poet and Vuj's show. Have a nice um, He's a big, big Serbian, literally tall, big Serb. <laughs> big Serb, um, not bigger than Matic. Um, but yeah, Vuj literally hooked us up with places to go eat, places to go drink, things to do, things to see. So we're going to go and check them all out, man. So yeah, let's see what Serbia has to offer. Like I have to say, on first thought, I feel bad that I had stereotypical views in terms of it's going to be cold, it's going to be really hostile. And yes, I've only been here a few hours, but it does feel really warm. And I don't mean warm as in temperature. I mean, like, people just seem very, very friendly. And Vuj did say that to me. So um, yeah, man, this is dope already. Let's go and check it out. Let's see what it's got to offer. It's like Houses of Parliament, fam. Actually, don't look like Houses of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> Not Houses of Parliament, but it looks it looks like an important building. It doesn't look like flipping studio flats. So, <laughs> I bet it probably is, isn't it? See? Oh, telling me, you're telling me it's not no important building. Look at this. Look, that looks pretty important to me. No, bro, it hasn't just got a flag. It's got like, all like, things. It's a university, that's what it is. So they were probably like dorms, maybe. <laughs> but it's the University of Belgrade. That's what it is. Which I would make that quite important. It's a fucking... Right, so I'm in um, Walter Sereveski. And like we said, we need to try some traditional traditional Serbian food. I'm gonna have a Savapi. A Savapi? Chavapi. Chavapi, fam. Chavapi, which is made up of like onions and spring onions with some cheese here, which looked like ice cream. I thought it was gonna melt in there on top of the sausage. I thought ice cream on top of sausage, but it's not. It's basically Philadelphia. I'm gonna call it that. And some sausage inside here. It's like Philadelphia, but mm, creamy delicious. Okay, there you go. So let's tuck into some Chavapi. Yes, mate. It's, uh, I feel like there's too much bread there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that bit of sausage. Get in, my son. Get in over there. Yes, Get a little, little bit, bit of that. bread. Yep, little bit of that. A little bit of bread on the side. That's yes, right. And the inside with the cheese or yeah, slash get, ice cream. Get bare of that cheese. Bro. There you go. And you look, you like, you know me how fussy I am with food. I don't just go for it in case you take a big chunk and you don't like it. But I'm going to take a big chunk, even if I don't like it. Yes, mate. All right, cool. <laughs> it's very good. Yes, mate. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, ooh, yeah, yes, mate. That cheese really isn't ice cream, it's actually cheese. <laughs> Chivapi, 9 out of 10. Yes, mate. And it could be a 10 by the time I finish it. But it's like a, it's like a glorified kebab. I like it. It's better than a kebab. It feels more healthy for me than a kebab, right? Yeah? yeah you know what a kebab is, right? Yeah. It feels more healthy than a kebab. So, um, yeah, like, right, fuck off. I'm trying to, like, get my chivapi. That's my ass.
Young Peeps, we've done it again. We are pitch side here at the Partizan Stadium here in Belgrade, Serbia for the Partizan versus Manchester United game later on. Very, very warm, man, I can't lie. 28 degrees. There's me taking my North Face jacket to the flipping dry cleaners just to be leaving it at home because I checked the weather and it's 28 degrees. Um, the people have been warm, the people have been lovely here. There's been a lot made about coming here. Players talking about protocol and stuff. Hopefully it doesn't come to that because my experience of being here so far has been fantastic. So let's give you a little tour of the stadium. So here we are inside the tunnel at the Partizan Stadium, man, here in Belgrade. Very tight, very compact. They're going to hear a rupture of noise before they walk out of this tunnel. Both sets of players are going to be here. Scotty McSaw's going to be eyeballing people, ready to win that midfield battle. Martial's going to have his cool. He's not going to have his gloves on because it's 28 degrees. Um, anyway, they walk out of there, into here. There's a bit of a running track here. So West Ham, this is how it's done if you're going to have a running track. Yeah, not flipping 9,000 miles away from the pitch. Rapture of noise, I think it's 30,000 here inside the Partizan Stadium through this little gateway that is lovely sponsored by Europa League, which is going to be Champions League next season, onto the pitch, which is fantastic. Way better than in AZ Alkmaar, which was a Kazian Stadium, synthetic pitch. This is real grass. I can make the box from here, Ashley Young. Yeah, it's not that far. I don't even know if this is the full length pitch. From here to the goal, it's not that far. So, Andreas Pereira, Ashley Young, you heard it first. Flex has been here with an imaginary air ball. I've already whipped in two to the centre spot in my head. It's not that hard. The goal's only there. Jesus Christ, these men can't even hit corners from there to there. Professional footballers practicing every day. You know, when you actually deep it, yeah, and you actually think about it, they should never get that wrong. Like, I know there's human error and stuff, but if you're training every single day, and I mean every single day from the age of like eight to 33, you should not be messing up a corner from there to there. You just shouldn't, I'm sorry, I don't care about pressure, I don't care about like one in 10 might go wrong. Really and truly, every single one, 100 out of 100 should hit the penalty spot that actually isn't there. Wait, oh no, it is there. <laughs> the penalty spot is there. Um, but yeah, this is the goal. Um, like I checked at uh, the Kajian Stadium, it is a full length goal. Yeah, the net's all there, it is proper. So, um, I don't want any excuses of why we didn't have any shots on target today. The goal's fucking big enough, yeah? And it's the same on both sides. Um, so we're just walking across the pitch now. I have to say, definitely moulds, definitely moulds. Um, so they haven't actually finished putting the lines on yet. You can see the centre circle. Well, you can see the centre line. You can't see the actual centre circle. Um, they haven't actually painted that. I'm guessing that it's going to be there before the game starts. But a very, very flat pitch, no bubbles. You can't talk about any form of um, bad surface and all of that shit. The weather's perfect. Look, clear blue skies, you can see. Um, obviously, it's going to be dark by the time it comes, so pure black skies, but um, there's no forecast for rain or wind or all of that. And then now we're onto the touchline. Now, this is where the two sets of teams are going to be sitting. This is probably for officials and delegates and stuff. Let me jump on the other side so you guys can see. Probably officials and delegates sitting here. I'm not sure whether it's the home or the away team, this one. I can't read Serbian. Oh yeah, it does say referee right there. No, but that one's quite small as well, so I'm thinking I'm not quite sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this will be where um, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess and say the Manchester United team are. No. No? Because they said that the away Home side or away side? Uh, I'm not sure. You're not sure? <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure. But um, I'm going to guess and say this is Manchester United. No, yes, yeah? Manchester. yeah? I think that one is. I win. I think he, he agrees with me. This is where Oli's probably going to take his seat and probably sit here for 95 minutes and not move. No, I'm joking. Um, interesting view, when you pitch side, it's hard to see things over the other side. When you see people kind of um, saying, oh, make tactical decisions, it is, it is difficult to see um, at pitch side, but some things aren't difficult to see. And what I don't want to see is after five minutes, Ollie's. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I want to see him sitting there in his chair because our game plan has been implemented and our game plan is fucking working. I don't want to see him panicking. I don't want to see Kieran McKenna up because it's not working. I don't want to see Mick Phelan going, oh, what's going on? Can we just get some organisation from the jump, man? That's all I want to see. Is that too much to ask? But um, yeah, so that's a little tour inside the stadium. We like to bring you guys closer to the action. We love doing these vlogs for you. Um, we didn't do one in Holland because I'm telling you, man, it weren't that great. This has been a, a, a lot better experience, man. I've really enjoyed our time here in Serbia, I think it's been fantastic. Um, hopefully, look, the game hasn't happened yet as, as you're watching this, um, it, it would have. Um, so hopefully there hasn't been some stuff that happened during the game, some unsavory scenes. 
because I feel like this occasion deserves to just, let's just talk about the football. If Man United were shit, Man United were shit, let's talk about that. If Partizan were a good team, they're a good team or they're a bad team, let's talk about the game. I don't want to be coming out of this game talking about a section of the stands got shut down or this happened or this hostility happened. Everybody I've met so far has been mad polite. Um, again, I don't know if it's the right terminology to call the guys that I've just met over there in the homestand the ultras um, or the hooligans or whatever, but that's what he called himself. Um, but he was a very friendly guy, man, and they, they welcomed us in. They said, anything we need, we can come in here, we can shoot. I said, we want to show um, what football is around the world. And I know the mick gets taken out of being in Europa League because, let's face it, we don't want to be in this competition. It's a second tier of European football. But I think it's still important for the game of football and for fan channels um, to show it and to take people who, um, you know, there's people that are season ticket holders at home or go to games at Old Trafford that would never go to a European away game and there's people who have never been to a game in their life. So I feel privileged and happy to be able to show you guys um, and lucky to be able to, to, to show you guys inside stadiums where we can. We can't always do it. We're not mainstream media. We always manage to get in and, and, and people enjoy us coming in and, and, and can see what we're trying to do. And we're trying to you know, promote the club at the end of the day to all the Man United fans around the world. That's Manchester United, right? Yeah, I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> this is <laughs> you, you did man. say that. Told you, you told me it was here, man. <laughs> it's okay, no problem, no problem. Flipping heck. So some Stupid bunch of players. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A bunch of players that I don't know will be sitting in this dugout, and a manager that I don't know his name will be sitting in this dugout. The Man United dugout is over there. Um, but like I said, to finish off, man, um, thank you guys for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed the vlog, man, because I certainly have. The result hasn't happened yet. The game hasn't happened yet. So I've still got a big smile on my face. Um, but hopefully that smile is still there come four o'clock in the morning when we've got to leave to go to the airport to come back to interview Ryan Giggs. Actually, that'd be pretty good. Peace. It's match day, it's loud. Um, we're probably about 45 minutes from kickoff. Team news has been announced. We've gone with the back five um, again. Brandon Williams getting a start as well. Jimmy Garner getting a start. Marshall getting a start, which is brilliant. Our fans are just waiting to queue um, outside the away end, which I'm going to go to in a minute. I can feel the atmosphere vibes in. That south stand that we was in earlier in the vlog where the ultras let us into, I can hear them literally on the other side of that stadium. Um, and it's, it's getting really loud, man. So I'm, I'm buzzing, man. Please, um, to be fair. I know it looks like the army, but um, they've got a job to do, man. And so far, there's been no trouble and everything's all good, man. And everyone seems in good spirit. So let's get into the stadium, too. Let's have a look.
So finishing off here at the Majestic, this is where the Busby Babes were before they left for that night in 1958 here in Belgrade. A, a tragic moment, a fitting way to finish off um, the vlog. We've won the game by 1-0. There was a little bit of hostility inside the ground, I can't lie about that. I got hit by a bottle, um, but it's all good. There was missiles flowing, like lighters and stuff like that. But inside here is a fantastic place. It's got momentum for when um, the Busby Babes were leaving. They've got like different pieces of momentum for when they, their last little meal that they had. They've all signed like a, a menu that they that they ate here, and they've kept it in pristine condition. There's also a piano that all the Busby Babes or some of the Busby Babes were around, um, kind of playing before they they set off on that tragic night in 1958, which was a fitting way to finish this vlog. We're out here in Munich in Munich so we're out here in Belgrade getting real fan opinion um, we could have just chose to stay at home we knew it would be a difficult trip we knew there'd be some hostility but at the end of the day we, we come we do it we're a fan channel I'm out of here peace big thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos and if you want to check out more make sure you do that just to the right of me we are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well Facebook Instagram Twitter and YouTube the socials are along the bottom Peace.